Hello, Randy Rain here, and it's been a while since I did a video on Blip, and I've been doing all these Tomy full breakdowns on all the Tomy games, and I haven't done the Blip yet, so I guess I'll do that, even though I don't really think this is a very good game. But it is a cool mechanism, so let's see how this thing works. Now, I have the box and everything with this one, and I'm pretty sure the mechanism works. This when I... Um, that sounds kind of right, but I don't know. I can't see in there because the only thing wrong is, you know, the battery compartment and all of these are, this one's broken. This one's about to break. That's got to be fixed. Yep, that's the inside of a blip. I always like the mechanism that keep you from pushing more than one of these down. Little thing below, when you push it, it stops it from moving. It's kind of clever. These come off. Those are springs. So if these were just sitting in there, if you push the center one down, it would fall in this slot and it would go down. And the other ones wouldn't be able to go down because they're going to be hidden right here on either side. And it won't move because the, the middle one holding it. If you push either one of the end buttons, it'll move this way or this way. And when that happens, it moves the slot out of the way of the middle one so the middle one can't go down and the other one on the other end still can't go down. Kind of clever. Got a little ratcheting system here. You can turn it this way but it'll turn the whole thing that direction. Got a switch over here. That's switching between one and two players and basically what's happening is when you push this down it pushes the serve over and keeps it there and that's the power switch the only thing the battery does is turn the little led on that's it that's why it's just connected by these little thin wires and so you have three volts there and it looks like a white, brown, black. I know black's the lowest one, so whatever white, let's see, I think brown is, oh, so it's a very low resistor. It shows about 46 ohms. And here's the scoring. So basically, every time you serve, it, it advances the other person. Little ratcheting wheels. And this is also what pokes through at the bottom so you can reset them. These are all marked left and right as well. And now we're down to this little fun thing. Got a little spring here. It's melted into place over here. Pop that off. down this. Take this one off. Let me push that one. And got a little gear down here. Now this is all spring loaded. Scary to actually take this apart, but let's see what happens. 
Now the coil is going to be mainly hooked at this one. So just going to be very careful here. This one fell out. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see, the coil is going to pull on this. So it's going to go that away when it goes. It's going to turn this one. It's just going to turn this one. Turn this one. And then there's like a little, I guess this is a governor type of thing that keeps it steady. You know, as it winds down. That would be my guess on what that does. Little screw right there. Wonder what that's for. That's weird. There's like a, a little screw going into that post. Wonder if that's just for strength. I think that's what this thing rides on. To wind it. Yep. So I guess that's just for strength right there. Anyway, have a good look. Because that's what's in there. A little governor right here, I guess. So, that's my guess. Is that little thing keeps it the same speed no matter if it's really wound up or it's starting to unwind and get loose. Yeah. This is. Okay, that one feels okay. I'm going to leave that one. These have to be remade. I was given this little brad system, but it's for fabric, and you have to back it up with this thing, and of course, you know, you're not really going to get there. So I'm just trying to figure out a different way to use it. Okay. Hmm. That's awesome. And of course, the little switch here. We can even break this down. Couple of tabs. There it is. You're just moving a little piece of metal on top of those two pieces of metal. And they kind of look a little corroded down in there.
So everything's been clean and I neutralized all the corrosion. And now I'm not convinced it's white. That could be yellow. And I don't remember what yellow is. Yeah, this is such a clever mechanism right here. So you have this main piece of plastic here. Comes up here. There's a hole in it. And then there's this other like little disc shaped piece of plastic that comes through and has some gears on this side of it. And on that disc, there's a pin right there and a gear is stuck onto it. And so that gear spins on this piece of plastic that spins. And that gear, its teeth run on the inside of this main piece of plastic here. And so as you spin it around, this piece here, you're moving that planetary gear around and it's turning along with the gears. That planetary gear itself has a pin on it that's sticking up right here. And if you watch, it only will follow this bar right here. You just watch right to that pin. It's always moving just straight across as that gear flips around. Now it's upside down. Now it's pushing that away. And that's that's right side up. That's pushing this way. And now you're back to here. And that's all in one turn. One revolution of this that plastic piece. And with that, this section here connected to this arm that's in that pin, it stays parallel. This LED right here stays parallel to this bar. Everything's been clean, so I could put it back. That gear goes there. And that's going to connect into that one. Alright, so the next part are these gears. And I figured this out the last time. And I've had several people contact me saying that I solved their problem because they couldn't figure out why theirs wouldn't work after they put it back together. When they're assembling this, this sticker is probably the last thing that goes on. And there's holes here. And these set into a jig. And these little pins were sticking up. And when you put these gears in, they have holes in them as well. And so you would put them in the holes. And then that would hit match these little pegs going into the right spot when you drop it in just like this. So yeah, this thing is always moving straight across this way. And this thing is moving and it's being pulled this way with the spring. But as those gears turn, it hits those pegs and that's what changes.
So what happens is when you don't push the right button, all you're doing is stopping it. You're just holding on to it. So basically that. It doesn't take much to stop it. Yeah, so when you push a button and you push the right button, all you're doing is moving it out of the way so it doesn't stop it. Three point one volts. So they have R and L's on them, so right is first and left. And I gave these a little wipe down. Get other people's grime off of it. And the little ratchet part goes outward. Those don't say right and left. They say seven and six. But they have to go in between those little pegs right there. See this little switch here. All it does is force that over. Then this can go. And then that goes to there. And these little things can actually come out. I gave it all a good washing. So there it is, a complete breakdown and restoration of the Tomy Blip, the digital game. So you can see right there, digits. Right there on the back, automatic digital scoring. So yeah, it has digits, so it's of course digital. This game really doesn't do it for me, and it's really no different than the other wind-up games of Tomy. The only thing different is, you know, this one has a LED on it. It would have been nice for this to be better. If it really worked like Pong and you could get the angles and how it would bounce and everything, then you could speed it up. But it doesn't do that. And so really, in my opinion, I think it needs to be slower. If you're going to have it like this, it needs to be slower. So you might as well just hide half of the screen because half of the screen doesn't even matter. And just look at your little section and try to get at the last minute the right one and so i think it would be more fun if it was just a little bit slower and you had a better chance at getting it so that you could volley back and forth for a while before someone finally misses it but then the timer would just run out and so you would need it to be motorized i guess at that point it's way more than they wanted to do might as well work on a digital derby or something so there it is, an original blip with the chrome looking nice. Not very many scuffs or scratches on the display here. Have the original box, everything. And it's on eBay right now. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can go and throw down a bid and get an original blip. And if you like this video, I sure would appreciate a big thumbs up. And of course, if you want to see more stuff like this, hit the subscribe button. I want to thank these people. These are the patrons. These are the people bringing you the complete breakdown of Blip, the digital game. So every single little piece in here was brought to you by these people. So I thank them very much. And if you'd like to become a patron, of course, there are links and all that stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. That was the Blip, the digital game.